the new Radio Oddity GD77 arrived today and I thought I'd give it a once over. Now many people know that the eagerly awaited GD55 dual bander got knocked on the head pretty quickly when a flaw in the design was found that made it unsuitable for repeater users. Time slot 2 is unavailable so many people including me cancelled their orders but now the new 77 is shipping and is now obviously in competition with the TYT 2017 and the Retivis RT82. So here's my first impressions. Before we start, some important safety information. It comes with the usual death adapter, a great term invented by my friend Big Clive. But even worse than that, it ships with what appears to be a USB charger and a USB cable that plugs into the charger to charge. It even has the USB symbol on it. I suggest you stick the charger cable in and then either glue or tape the two items together permanently because instead of the usual five volts, it sticks out 12. So your phone or other USB devices will no doubt react variably to this, um, perhaps just getting hot, but many are quite likely to go pop. We're stuck with the small mains adapters to the foreign two pin plugs we all have to live with, despite the fact they all fail the safety tests. But for those that scoff at these, just ask yourself a question. Have you ever tried to get a plug into a socket at the back of a TV or computer or down the side of a sofa? Most of us have done this and the death adapter design lets you stick the plug in, leaving one of the pins exposed. It's a live pin. Seriously dangerous stuff, even if you know what you're doing. A proper adapter simply won't let you insert a plug in the wrong orientation. These ones will. Not so good. They should really sort this one out. Anyway, let's move on. It's similar in size to the TYT380 I have and smaller than the RT82 and slightly lighter too. The antenna sits into the housing and it's quite a tight fit. The now familiar red button on top and it's got two side buttons. You cannot program these to change channels, but you can program to change the zone. The display is pretty simple but one feature I like better than the Retivis. When the light goes out, you can still read the display. The Retivis goes off totally. The battery is a slide off 7.4 volt type and it will fit on my 380 charger and charge, which is very nice. One thing that annoys me greatly is the beep when you change channels. You normally get a nice clean bip, but sometimes you get a double distorted one. Just something like that that shouldn't happen. programming software is weird too. As it comes, many functions are greyed out in the menus. You need to start the software, then press Control, Alt, Shift and F11 all at the same time. And you enter this password, DMR961510. Then it's back to normal. I've not noticed anything strange so far in the software and it detects the USB port automatically, which is nice. There's no warning before it programs. If you click the button on most of these applications, a little box appears asking if you want to program or read it. Um, this one doesn't. As soon as you click the button with immediate effect, it programs or reads the radio. So make sure you're ready. Programming works fine on Windows 8 and I've tested it on Vista as well. It's been flawless so far, I've not had one failure. Despite the horrible trackball on the RD82, I do think I still prefer it. I can't find anything wrong with the CD77 at all. And it's a bit slimmer than the TYT380. But there again, the Retivis is more expensive. Not a lot, I know, but I'm getting quite attached to that one. So far, apart from the weird bleep, uh, it looks pretty good for people who want a portable digital dual band radio on a budget. <laughs>